I needed a oof. I needed a haircut. It's a lot better. Jugglebot boy. Hey, Mary. Oh, Jugglebot boy. Oh, Jugglebot boy. Want to say hi? Hi, Mary. Oh, Jugglebot boy. Hi, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about uh, some more delve and some more go routine stuff and kind of a chance to look at some maybe some of the basics of go routines and how to debug them uh, using delve, which is super cool. I like delve a lot. I like using the CLI. One thing I do want to make clear from my last video is I. I feel like the implication that came across was like nobody had ever heard of the Delve debugger before. And that's certainly not the impression. I mean, Delve is essentially the debugger for Go. I just wanted it to be made really clear that a lot of people don't use the CLI version of it. Or they, well, they don't use the CLI at all. And uh, as a command line kind of guy myself, uh, I really like using the CLI. That's what I'm going to continue to do. So today what we have is kind of a basic demonstration around using Go routines and um, what they kind of look like to the computer and what, how we can use Delve to debug those Go routines. Because Go, the big reason that we use Go is because of its concurrency model or parallelism plus, which is kind of how I've come to talk about it. So that's what we're gonna do today. So here we have a very uh, basic Go routine demonstration. Here we have uh, a main function and we start with, you know, i is equal to zero, just this very simple iterator. We create a, a weight group. We add to that weight group, and then we iterate uh, through, and we do a very, very simple print me function. And that function you can see here, uh, simply if we pass it um, an integer, and we pass it a weight group, uh, we perform a defer, and we do uh, a printf where we just print out the integer that was passed along. Um, this is probably one of the best ways that I ever learned about how Go routines actually work. And so let's do some uh, do some debugging with Delve and learn about some Go routines, huh? So here I'm just deleting all the stuff associated with with weight groups. So let's kind of see what um, happens here. And we can probably see some pretty interesting stuff. Some interesting things happen. So let's do a go run. And here we can see we don't have weight groups. And so what happens when we don't have a weight group? Well, I mean, the command executes and the program executes, but nothing is printed out, right? And so that's one of the things that you have to understand about go routines is that when we create go routines, we're essentially spawning off of these processes from this main process that are really in fact kind of independent of this main process unless we tell the main process hey keep track of that that's actually really important we want to keep track of those things we want to make sure that they run the way that they're supposed to we want to make sure that they execute the way that they're supposed to so let's um undo all of that Okay, so now that we've gotten to that point, let's start adding some breakpoints and kind of see what happens, shall we? The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to come in here. We're gonna go to Delve, right? Now we're gonna say Delve Debug. Okay, we're gonna break it main, dot main, cool. Continue. Okay, so now we're at main, so let's, um, Let's list around line 21. And there we can kind of see our function. So let's add breakpoints at like every line from 21 through like 24 or something. So break main.go 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We can't add one at 25 because remember there is no statement there. So it's going to yell at us and say that there's no statement available. Okay. So let's continue. Hey, we're right there. What are my locals? Oh, I is equal to zero when we have a, a weight group established. And just a reminder, a weight group is just a way for the main program, or the main execution, to keep track of all the other Go routines that it's spawning. Otherwise, it 
it doesn't know about them, and we'll get what will happen in the first place where we'll fall through, essentially, through the main execution of the function, and we'll have those dangling go routines, which is not something we want to do, right? We want everything to execute and then close. And so that's why we create those wake groups, and that's why we have the wake group adds, because we have to add for every single go routine that we create in here. And we want all of them to execute before the end of the main execution. So that's why you also see that defer. We'll get into that more. So, okay, here we are. We're on line 20. Let's continue. All right, now we're at line 21. So we're about to instantiate a new or create a new Go routine. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, we're kind of falling through here. Now we're at our I++. Okay. Hey, look at that. So now we've created a, a new Go routine, right? And that's really important. So let's go to help. So if we look in here, we can also see that, hey, we can, you know, if we look around, we can see that it says listing and switching between threads and Go routines. So that's something that we can do. So let's um, do GR. Hey, there's a Go routine occurring, right? We have a runtime, we have a user, and, and you know the start of it, and you know all, all that kind of fun stuff. So it tells us all about the process that that Go routine is currently undergoing. So if we do GRS, GRS um, stands for Go routines. GR is just Go routines. So Go routines, you know, up here it says list program Go routines, right? So let's list those Go routines, and we actually have have a few. Right. So there is, you know, there's multiple Go routines running when you run a Go program. Um, that's just part of the natural execution of a Go program, depending on which binaries you import or uh, which binaries, which libraries you import, um, which functions you use, all that kind of great stuff. The way to tell if it's kind of running under the hood versus you're actually and creating a Go routine is to uh, look at where it's executing, right? So we have a main.go, main.main. Main in Go is a Go routine. Go figure. But then if we look down, we also see user lib, um, a lot of user libs. So that's stuff that's running underneath the hood. Um, but when we get down to here, we can see main.go, line 22, main.main.func1. So if we look at our current where we currently are in our program, you can see that we're essentially running an anonymous function. Um, it's kind of the way to think about it. You know, when we instantiate this Go routine, when we create this Go routine, the way that we're using it here is that it's creating like an anonymous function. You can also, there's ways to create anonymous structs in, in Go if that's what you want to do with, uh, as, as well. So because it's technically anonymous the way that go labels it is to just simply label it func1 which we can see here right so within our main package and our main function we have anonymous func running and so we're just going to label it func1 okay cool what are my locals hey eyes one great but you can see here that we still don't have anything being printed out and that's what our program's doing right it should be printing out things well, if we continue and we keep continuing, hey, look, we have all of a sudden created our go routine zero. So it, it printed out, I am go routine zero. And if we keep going, one, two, three, right? So we're kind of at like our third iteration through this for loop executing these routines, right? And it doesn't execute until it gets to uh, from line 21 to line 23, which is really, really interesting. If you kind of think about it. So we keep going. One, two, three. Hey, go routine three, four, five, six, Seven. So they, and there you go. Um, it keeps you just going and going and going and going and going and going until it finally exits. And we've kind of gone through all of our all of our go routines, right? So let's look at this, but let's execute it without any breakpoints. 
right? Because here we noticed it executed in a certain order. Let's see what happens if we don't do it in a certain, if we don't add any breakpoints at all. So here, we're in Delve Debug. You can see it just executes in whatever random, random order. So let's go back actually to the code itself, right? And let's do a go run. Nine, zero, one, two, three, seven, eight, four, and then five. Let's do it again. Nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we did this multiple times, hundreds of times, you'll see that they actually pretty much execute in random order. And that's one thing that you really have to remember when you're writing Go routines is that when you're executing a, all of these Go routines, you have to understand that they're going to just kind of be spawned and whatever happens in whatever order, depending on what's going on under the hood, it's going to be completely random as to what executes first, what doesn't execute first. So that's one of the big things that you need to understand about um, Go routines. But the big lesson here is you can use Delve within the CLI to uh, go and look at all the Go routines that are currently executing within your program. Okay, so break main dot main. Uh, let's see where are all my BP. Okay, so I only have one breakpoint set for main dot main right now. And so let's see here. So let's set a breakpoint within main uh, at line, let's say 24. Okay, so right where that uh, I plus plus happens. So break main dot go 24. Cool. Okay, so now we are here. So let's see, if, do we have any Go routines running? Um, not by the look of it. So let's do DRS. So we have the this one routine running that's within our main. Let's see what happens if we keep going, All right? Okay, so nothing's printed yet, interesting. Oh, hey, look at that, look. I'm go routine zero, I'm go routine two. Okay. Uh, let's see our go routines. Ah, so look at that. We have print, print.go, new printer. Yeah. That's our that's our go routine doing, you know, doing its thing. Let's keep going. Look at that, you'll see go routine one, go routine three. Pretty cool. Keep going. Oh, nothing on that round. I'm go routine four. Only one printed that time. Keep going. Five and six. So what am I trying to teach you here? What I'm trying to say is that the execution of your main and the Go routines that it creates are two completely separate things within the computer, right? They're going to execute randomly unless you're very keen on how and when they execute. In which case, why are you using a Go routine? Just use a loop, right? Um, don't use a Go routine. Just loop over and call the thing multiple times. So what I'm really the thing that I'm trying to get to is that the reason that you use Go routines and why Go is awesome is because if you have multiple pieces of, I'm not going to say unrelated information, but you need multiple pieces of information that are not sharing memory, but you need them all to be delivered at the same time, but you don't care exactly when they're delivered but you care how they're delivered and they're all sort of co they, they kind of like come apart like that and then they coalesce all together back again that's when you're going to use go routines so you're going out there fetching all of these informations fetching this fetching that fetch that fetch that fetch that okay cool i'm done let's all come back together and do some stuff and where you're really going to see that come in real world handy is with graphql so Go and GraphQL are basically kind of handmade for each other. And I'm actually doing a presentation on Golang and GraphQL uh, upcoming on Wednesday evening 
for the Golang MN Meetup. Um, I'm doing a whole presentation on it. I'm revamping the video that I made around it. I've got a whole presentation plan. It's gonna be really, really cool. But today I really just kind of wanted to delve a little bit more into Delve and how it views GoRoutines, how to mess with GoRoutines, how to see what's being executed within your program and how you can uh, you know, give you a little bit more of an understanding of how GoRoutines work and what they do and kind of what's going underneath the hood. And look at that. Go routine, I am GoRoutine 7 and I'm GoRoutine 8. I didn't get anything on that one. Let's see here. Do I have any GoRoutines? Yeah, I've got a couple running. I got my main, you know, main.go, funk1. Um, look on line 21. Well, look, that's being run, that line. All right, keep going. And hey, we're done. So that's kind of uh, Go and some Delve and some Go routines. I uh, just kind of wanted to do an exploration, kind of show you what's going on and how you can use Delve, uh, the Delve CLI to actually execute Go routine, um, uh, to examine Go routines, excuse me. Uh, I hope you're having a really good day. I hope maybe whoever views this video, if you're interested, um, I'm going to post a link to the meetup in the description. Uh, I really appreciate your time and yeah, have a great day. Go out there and write some, uh, some interesting code.